by induction is a topic that a lot of people are initially very scared of. But once you get past the initial idea of how it works, it's not something that is technically very difficult to execute usually. And the idea that I'm referring to is that once you prove an initial case explicitly, you don't have to prove every other single case. In fact, you instead prove that one leads to the other one. Thus, you have proved the implication, right? That this one being true implies that one. And therefore, your initial case implied the second case, and the second case implies the third one, and everything else is proven. This creates a lot of discomfort initially because it feels like you're assuming the exact same thing that you want to prove. But again, once you understand that concept that this is not cheating, I am not assuming the thing that I want to prove, then the mechanics of actually doing a proof by induction tends not to be that difficult. Actually, I don't really like classifying topics as easy or difficult. It's more about how mechanical are they? Some topics have a very specific sequence of steps that you're going to follow in the exact same way all the time. Those are more mechanical and I tend to consider them easier. Whether other topics are less mechanical, there's less of a predetermined sequence of steps and more like each problem requires you to have an idea. And having an idea is something that is more intrinsically difficult. You can't always have an idea when you want to have an idea, right? And the thing about proof by induction is that when students first see it, it feels like there's a brilliant idea going on in each new exercise. But that is not the case. That's actually what I would like you to believe about proof by induction before we get into the exercise. It's actually a mechanical sequence of steps. You always follow the same steps. You start by proving the initial case of the thing that you're trying to prove. That's usually going to be n equals 0 or n equals 1. And the problem is going to make clear what the initial case is supposed to be because it's going to tell you what values of n you are required to prove. And then you just take the first one to be your initial case. And then after you've done the initial case, you say the word assume then you copy the same statements that you're trying to prove, but when you copy it, instead of putting n, you put n minus 1 in all of the appropriate places. That's usually going to be an equation, right? You're trying to prove that something is equal to something else. And then you start to manipulate it algebraically, always keeping in mind that you're trying to make the current thing that you have, the thing that you assumed, you're trying to make it look more and more like the version of it that was stated in the problem statement, like the thing for n. And then if you keep going like this, just doing the same manipulation to both sides of the equation, eventually you're going to get there. You're going to get to the statement for n also being true, coming from that assumption of the statement from n minus 1. That said, I have been trying to make the argument that proof by induction is actually easy. And then there is this problem. This problem is not easy. I didn't think so. So I want to go through this problem. So let me get something out of the way here first. When I copied this problem from the question that it came from, there was a parenthesis here indicating that this whole thing is actually inside of that sum. I don't like that parentheses, so I didn't put it here. I feel like it's too much. There are too many other parentheses here. And I will argue that I don't need an extra set of parentheses here to say that this thing is inside of the sum. It has to be inside of the sum because there is an M here. This M is the index of the sum. So it doesn't even make sense outside of the sum. So that is enough of an indication that this term here needs to be inside of the sum, even if you don't explicitly say that with parentheses, because it wouldn't make sense outside, because it depends on a letter M, which only exists as a variable inside of the sum. Okay, so it wouldn't make sense to read this as just some 1 from 1 to n, which would make that summation equals to n, and then add this. This is nothing because this has an m, okay? 
The next observation that we need to make is that the key difference between this and the simple repetitive induction exercise that I was just mentioning is that we actually have two letters left. M that I was just discussing is definitely not going to be the variable of my induction because it's barely a variable at all. It's just the index of the sum. But even taking away M, we still have R and N both appearing here. So which one is my induction variable? It starts with the difficulty right at the very beginning. I want to do the initial case, but I have to think about what is the initial case. Is it R equals 3? Because the problem is telling me that R only starts at 3. Or is the initial case N equals 1? Because being in Z plus, the first N would be 1. Which one of these things should I take as my initial case? Well, I rarely say this anymore these days because more and more I am trying to look for the reasons why I think the things that I think. But my intuition is telling me that R equals 3 is the initial case. So my plan for this video is to go through the whole exercise following my intuition that R equals 3. But if you're not satisfied with me justifying things by intuition, please believe me. I'm also not satisfied with that either. So after I finish that, I plan to backtrack and start over again to see what would happen if I made the other choice, if I considered my initial case to be n equals 1. Even though it feels counterintuitive to me right now and I don't want to do it, I will do it uh, because I want to see what happens. But let's do this first. So you choose what the initial case is and then you're supposed to substitute r equals 3 into the equation that you have to see what happens. But in this case, the thing that I am trying to prove feels so much more complicated than usual that I'm not even comfortable plugging in r equals 3 on both sides. I feel like I want to treat this as a show that question where it goes left to right. So I just substitute r equals 3 on the left side like I did here and then I manipulate it to get to the right side. So the first thing that happens here is that 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. And then these ones cancel out and I just have the sum of m, which is just the sum of an arithmetic sequence that I have a formula for. And here's that part where usually it seems like I am going to start doing things for no reason, which is where people feel uncomfortable and it looks like brilliant ideas if you don't understand why I'm making the choices. But it's not for no reason. The manipulations that I do are always trying to get to the place where I want to be. And over here, the place that I want to be has an n squared separate from an n. Over here, I have them multiplying each other. So they are here, I just can't see them, which is why at this point I'm going to choose to do the distributive here. It's not for no reason. This is the reason. I'm trying to get this to look more like that. And then I've put these colored coefficients here, the green one and the orange one. Why? For no reason. No, it's not for no reason. It's because I'm trying to get closer to there. And over there, I see that my n squared and my n are multiplied by something. So I'm going to put something else here as well. The green one, I think it's kind of clear now what is supposed to happen to it because I am substituting r equals 3 on the left side and I want it to become r minus 2 so that's 3 minus 2 lucky for me 3 minus 2 is 1 so I'm just going to substitute the green one by 3 minus 2 made a different choice with the orange one I wrote it as 4 minus 3 because there's a 4 there right so I'm trying to get closer to there I could have said 5 minus 4 but then that wouldn't be the thing that I want because I have a plus here and a minus here so this 4 minus 3 actually becomes a 3 minus 4 if I flip the sign. So that's actually the initial case finished there. I'm going to erase it to use the space for the rest of the question. So the next step is to assume the very same thing that you want to prove, but for one step back. Since I'm doing induction in R, I have taken the three times that R appears in the expression 
and I've written it in red here as r minus 1. This is the thing that I want to assume. And different from what I did in the initial case, I don't want to go from left to right here because I am not trying to prove this equality. This equality I am assuming. This is part of the structure of my proof by induction. The next step is that I have to start manipulating this in order to get to look like that. So I am going to have to do the same operation to both sides of this equation, but thinking about what I want to do on the left side, I want to add this sum to this other sum because the result of that is going to be that sum. So it's not for no reason. There is a very particular reason why I am choosing to do plus this out of the infinitely many things that I could be choosing to do. It's because adding this will make this look exactly like that. And that's what I am always trying to do in induction. I'm trying to get my previous case to look exactly like my current case. But how does this happen over here? They are two sums with the same index going from the same number to the same number. So I can just add the insides of both sums. So the first thing that I'm going to write here is a one that I have there, one plus these things plus these things. So I'm going to start with the one. And now I'm going to factor out a term of m minus one. I have m minus one here and here as well. So this m minus one is multiplying what? He is multiplying r minus 1 minus 2 plus 1. So it's just r minus 2. And here we see that the operation that I chose was effective because this is exactly that. Now all that I need to do is do the same operation to the right side of the equation and hope for the best. This is also the sum of an arithmetic sequence, so I'm going to write it on the other side without the summation. I should probably do distributive here as well so that I can add the like terms, the n squared with the n squared and the n with the n. So let's distribute it. So both fractions are over 2, they're going to stay over 2. And the coefficient of the n squared is now r minus 1 minus 2 plus 1. So it's just r minus 2. Now let's be careful with the minus here, but they're both minus and the answer is also going to be minus. So what I want is to add them. r minus 1 minus 4 plus 1, so r minus 4. That's it, we're done. As usual, a proof by induction feels like it's very difficult. It feels like you have no idea what you're doing and that this is never going to lead anywhere. And then suddenly, oh, we're done. We've proved what we wanted to prove. But now, like I mentioned, I wanna start over and do the counterintuitive thing. What if I thought that the initial case was supposed to be n equals one? Well, Let's substitute n equals 1 into the expression to see what happens with my initial case. I'm going to be just as careful as I was the other time, so I'm not going to substitute it both on the left and on the right. Just substituted it on the left. So now I have a sum of something that is just one term. m is going from 1 to 1. So this is just the same thing, but with m equals 1. Well, that's equal to 1, isn't it? Because 1 minus 1 here is 0. And now I have the task of making this one look like that. Well, if you mentally plug in n equals one, you can see that it's going to happen. But what I actually want to write down is the backwards sequence of steps because I don't want it to feel like I am assuming the right side here, which is what I want to prove. It's a silly thing, you know, but I'm trying to do a left to right proof so that I don't want to go from both sides. I started from the left and I'm committed to keeping the same direction all the way through. So here's what I'm going to do. In the end, it's going to look almost exactly like this, but without the n squared and the n, because those are going to be one. So at some point I am going to have r minus two minus r minus four over two, and that's gonna be the end of it. Let me write that down here. And now let me start going back kind of slowly. I have a minus r minus 4. Let's make that into a plus 4 minus r. Well, 4 minus 2 is 2, and I can put the r's together, right? And I guess that's enough. So we see what I did there. I used a little trick. I wrote backwards, literally. But the way that it looks on the paper, it looks like I did a left to right proof. So nobody can say that I didn't. 
Anyway, the initial case is done. And now, since I am now assuming that this is induction in N, not in R like I was doing before, uh, I should erase all of this and then assume the thing for N minus 1 and try to get it to look like the thing in N. But let's just keep track of what happened here. In this version, when I did the initial case N equals 1, the value of R did not matter because it was multiplied by 0 over there and it just became R minus R over here. So this is how I was able to do all at once, n equals 1, and all values of r. If you try to remember what happened in the previous version, what should have happened is that I should have been able to prove all at once for r equals 3 and all values of n. That is what happened because n was the last term in a sum that I had a formula for, the arithmetic sequence. So it's a little different than what happened here because the r was multiplied by 0, so it didn't happen. And over there, I actually used the formula to make it true for all n's for that particular value of r equals 3. Moving on, here is the thing that I want to assume for induction in n. It is the same thing that I want to prove, but now all the n's have been substituted for n minus 1's. And that happened also in three places. One is over there in the sum, one here, and one here. Now what I should do is to manipulate this expression in order to make it look like that one again. And in the case where the variable of induction is appearing as the top index of a sum, the standard way to do that is to add what would be the next term in the sum. So I have this thing here where instead of the m, I have an n. So if I put all of these terms where m goes from every value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until n minus 1, and now it also takes the value n, so that means that the sum is now going to go until the value n, which makes it look exactly like the left side of the thing that I want to prove. And now all that remains to do is to add the same thing also to the right side of the equation, manipulate it, and watch it become the right side of the thing that I want to prove. It's a thing with a term in n squared and a different term in n, so I should probably expand this over here. I didn't do anything to the second term, I just copied it down here. And as for the new term that I am adding to both sides of the equation, I multiplied it by 2 so that I can put it on top of the denominator 2 as well. And now I should start looking for the terms that I want. The n squared is kind of easy because I want it to be just multiplied by r minus 2. I already see the n squared multiplied by r minus 2 here. And there's nothing else in this line that's going to give me another n squared. So for that, that's just it. Now I'm going to start looking for the things that I'm multiplying n. I have a minus 2 times r minus 2, then I have a minus r minus 4, and then I have a 2 r minus 2. Hopefully a lot of that cancels out, but let's uh, find the terms that don't have any n first. First I have an r minus 2, then I have a minus 1 times minus r minus 4, which is an r minus 4, plus 2, and then minus 2 r minus 2. That's basically off camera there, but those terms all cancel out. Minus 2 with 2, minus 4 with 4, and minus 2r with r plus r. A lot of this cancels out as well. 4 minus 4, 2r minus 2r, and what remains is 4 minus r, which is good because it's with a plus here, and I want minus r minus 4, which is just 4 minus r. That's it. I'm done. So, who knew? My intuition counted for absolutely nothing because both of these ways to solve the question were absolutely equivalent. I can't say that one was easier than the other. They were absolutely the same. So, I am actually feeling more comfortable now. I'm happy that I did this because I was feeling uncomfortable justifying a choice by intuition. And it turns out that I don't have to justify my choice because the other choice was also just as good.